If you are ready to take your Bubble app to the next level and start involving API workflows, this video is going to show you how to get your app ready for that. This is just a quick little setup, a couple settings that you need to uh, enable. So you might have seen under custom events uh, in your actions list that you've got some API workflow options here where you can schedule an API workflow you can schedule a workflow on a list, meaning that the workflow will run for every item in a list. Uh, you can also cancel them and you can also set up and cancel recurring events. Okay, so how do we even uh, create these API workflows? Where does this happen? It's a little bit of a hidden area here. You gotta go into your settings. Then under your API tab here, the sub tab in the settings, you'll want to enable this checkbox. This app exposes a post workflow API. So once you do check this off, you'll see that at the very bottom of your page list here, this will become available, API workflows. You'll see that if I uncheck it, that's gone. That's not there. So this has to be checked for us to get to API workflows. Now, when you select that, this looks pretty much identical to any other workflow area for any of your pages, but the difference is that you don't have a front end uh, designer for it because API workflows are uh, server run actions. It's all just kind of background stuff. There's nothing to do on the front end. Um, where you'll trigger them uh, will be throughout your application. So I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But just so that you know here, you have two options. You can either create an endpoint. I'll go to create a new event here, a new endpoint or a new recurring event. So these are two separate things. If I create a new API endpoint, you would give it a name, make sure it does not have spaces because this is part of, a, of an API URL you would define your parameters if necessary. You can have some privacy rules there, uh, and then you could add all of your actions. I mean, this pretty much works just like any other workflow area uh, once, you, once you get down to this action level. And if you're needing to work with specific data within those actions, that's where your parameters come in. And I'll go over this stuff in more detail in other videos. Uh, with the recurring event, we'll do recurring event. Again, give it a name, new recurring and you need to define the type of thing for the event because what happens is you will set up a recurring event to happen on one entry in your database at whatever frequency. So you need to say, okay, well, this is a user entry or this is a message entry, something like that. Uh, and then again, whatever actions you want to happen uh, on a recurring basis. So how do we trigger these? If you go back, I'm gonna go back to my example page here, API demo. And I've just got a quick button here just so that we can see the actions getting set up again under custom events. So if we want to schedule an API workflow, this is just one firing of the workflow sequence. Uh, really quick, keep in mind that anything related to API workflows, uh, you've got to be on a paid plan for it to happen successfully. If you're on the hobby plan, you can look at this stuff and set it up. I mean, you can access the page, but the actions are probably not gonna run very well because this is a paid feature. So you would select the API workflow that you want from your drop-down list here. Okay, so these are all of the ones that I set up in that API workflows page. Uh, if I wanna click on one of these, then you would set up the scheduled date. So this can be you know, current date and time, meaning it would fire immediately. As soon as this button is clicked, it would trigger that API workflow or you can do a date in the future, like I can say two days from now, that's when I want this to run. What will happen is if it's scheduled in the future, Bubble's just gonna queue it up and it's gonna hang on to it and uh, you know only fire it when we reach that date and time. And if you go into your logs under the scheduler sub tab and uh, you can show any API work, I don't have anything scheduled here, but once you hit show, uh, it will list out all of the workflows that are scheduled to run with a with a timestamp as well. So it'll let you know when those will fire. And you'll also have a, an option here to cancel them. So anyway, so uh, once you do that, if you have any parameters set up for the endpoint, you'll need to define them here. Uh, and then setting up a recurring event is pretty similar. Um, you have one action to set it up and to cancel it. Uh, so you use the same action for that. Again, this is also part of the paid plan thing. Uh, you would select your recurring event that you want to use. 
define the workflow thing involved. So this recurring event is updating a user entry. So I can say the workflow thing is going to be the current user. Uh, and then you define your frequency. The frequency is also very dependent on your plan. So I think the first paid plan, the most frequent you can run a recurring event is monthly. And then the next one up, you'll be able to do things weekly, the next one up daily, right? So just make sure that you check out what plan you are. Actually, if you click on one of these, Bubble will tell you uh, if your, your plan allows for that level of frequency or not. So if I click on monthly, I believe, that one. Oh, I'm on a free plan, so this one's not going to let me for any of these. But um, just see, notice how that like I'm on a free plan and I can like access all of this stuff. So just make sure that you're on a paid plan to begin with, and then depending on the paid plan you're on, you might be restricted to different frequencies. Okay, so once you select your frequency, then you can set that set up the start date for when the recurring event will begin, um, and so this will really only need to be triggered once when you set it up for the first time. If Because once you set it up, now it's on a recurring basis, Bubble will automatically renew the next time it needs to fire. That's kind of the whole point of this thing. The only other time you would want to use this action on the same workflow thing is when you want to cancel it. So in order to cancel, you just set this to none. So by triggering the cancel, it'll stop it and Bubble won't run that event anymore. Okay, so that's just a quick uh, overview of how to get started with API workflows um, and recurring events in your app and, and how to set it up. Uh, so I'll have more videos on going into those in more detail and best practices for all of them. Thanks for watching.